Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yes, welcome to Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show, D'Anthony. Look at you. You look like shit. I do. Uh, uh, I appreciate that. I don't mean I that a long in, a, night. in a mean way. I'm just trying to be empathetic. No, I appreciate it. A long night last night, me fighting off the hurricane. Uh, I talked about an RPR this morning. Um, it was me versus uh, probably a Cat 7. <clears throat> and, That's uh, never happened. I won. On yep. this planet, no. No, I won. I won. I'm a, hero. I'm a hurricane survivor, and uh, I won. I do things like that. I beat hurricanes. Um, my bookie had the over-under um, of deaths? me. Uh, against the hurricane, mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, at me fighting it off <clears> for uh, three hours, I fought it off for six. So I, I fired uh, my rifle into it for a good forty-five minutes, probably last night. Yeah, yeah. Didn't really yeah. seem to do anything, but I had no, a good time. I wore a condom at one point, um, and I tried to fuck it. I tried to fuck the hurricane. Um, results seem positive. I mean, I came. Yeah, yeah. And the hurricane. I mean, did anybody die here yesterday? <laughs> I don't think no, so. No, I don't think anybody died. Luckily. <clears throat> Luckily, but they weren't, they weren't expecting it to make a landfall, and it did. Well, um, meteorologist, as everyone knows, uh, means liar in Spanish. Because they've never been right about anything no. in the history of goddamn humanity. Get it, fucked, meteorology. And it's one of those things where you see these people on the news, and you're like, hey, man, did you go to school for that? Because I doubt you went to school for meteorology. Well, if you look in South and Central America, they definitely they didn't go to school. They went to a plastic surgeon to get that job. Yeah. Because it's giant fake asses and giant fake titties, which is fine. You can still deliver the news with those things, but it seems like you're just distracting away from the fact that we're all going to die in some kind of hurricane. We had a, a lady on the show, Tara. Um, I don't, I'm blanking on her last name. I'm terrible. That's it. Tara. But that's not her. That's her Instagram name. Yeah. It's a real name. I don't fucking know. God damn it, man. I'm I, terrible I don't, I don't think we ever say her name on, on the show. She was on the show, and Vegas, uh, she yeah. said she was a meteorologist. She was in the, in the Marine Corps, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, she's, she's, tits, she's like, hilarious, though. Yeah, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's Is that something you have to do as a meteorologist? Do you big fake titties? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was this old guy that did the news where I grew up in Greenville, South Carolina. Mm-hmm. No one really believed anything he was saying until he got fake titties. Ah, yeah, uh, yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah, I mean, makes come sense. on, man. You Just, can't. It's, have a little fucking credibility if you're going to be in the field. Uh, speaking of credibility, uh, let's lead off the sports show with the Pac-12 <laughs> and their credibility. They just uh, recently made a list of demands that they want um, – uh, all the schools to follow. These are here. the players, right? These are the players. Um, one of them has since been let go by the university. Uh, what happens is what, Washington State, Washington kid? State. Yeah, you want to opt out. That means you can't be at the facility <laughs> or on the team anymore. And he found that out the hard way. Um, I want to go through this list because w- when I heard this, um, I'm thinking to myself, "Holy Christ, why do this now?" Is there a worse time to do this than right now during the middle of a pandemic when there's probably not going to be a college football season? Yeah. And you're going to make a <clears throat> list of demands anyways on top of it? No, it doesn't make any sense. And you're the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is not competitive for national championships anymore and haven't been for a very, very long time. No. Um, I'm trying to think of the this, last time a, a Pac-12 team was even in the championship. and uh, Well, they've never been in the, the, uh, the new championship, Oregon. right? Oregon. They've been in the championship, Oregon, uh, and they went up against Ohio State. I'm trying to figure who won. I mean, that would have been 2010, right? God, that was 2014. Who won that game? Um, Man, it was Ohio State against Oregon. I know it was Marcus Mariota. Who won the national championship? It certainly wasn't uh, the Pac-12. No, no, sure wasn't. It was uh, the Ohio State University. No one cares about it. Ezekiel Elliott uh, ran over that fucking team. Was he wearing a midriff shirt while he was doing it? Yeah, he was. He was. Fucking midriff shirt. He was. I guess it's uncomfortable to wear a full shirt. Um, But Um, uh, to see Cardale Jones, a third-string quarterback, beats the Heisman Trophy winner was highly enjoyable. But uh, that that goes to show you that, that, look, the Pac-12, it really isn't competitive in football anymore. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, or basketball, for that matter, to be honest with Anything. you. Anything. And maybe baseball? Maybe, I don't maybe, know. Maybe, but know. for them to make a list of demands like this um, seems silly when you're not competitive. Now, if this was the SEC, I could understand it. Um, SEC is the most competitive conference there is in football. They're the best in the biz right now, um, obviously. Um, I'm not going to debate that, even though my team is a, you know, a Big Ten school. Mm. I got the Big Ten sitting at two behind the SEC. And, and if there is some form of football this year, there will be nothing uh, that is more enjoyable on this earth than watching the SEC 
tear each other apart every single week. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what they're doing this year, right? Yeah, I, well, allegedly. We'll see. I, I still if, think if there's all a season, shut yeah, down. There's but it's like an it's an all. But if they do buckle up, watching the SEC will be must see TV every fucking Saturday. Yeah. If those kids had gotten together and said, "Hey, man, we have a list of demands," I think you listen. I think with the Pac-12, um, who who is in there? Who is in this? Like, I'm looking at the national championship winners usc is the last time a pac-12 is won. that was 2004 correct and that was stripped because reggie bush was doing something right uh yeah he was um, using the university to pay for his entire family so i mean um, he should have bought a stayed, house he should have just stayed with the kardashians he could have yeah, private done it that jet way. i know i look he had oh. all of the things um not that i blame college athletes but uh the hard time i i have with with this one in particular the pac-12 for this is um you know, there, there is a lot of people talking about that they need to do more for the black community and black athletes and mm-hmm. all that stuff, right? The Pac-12 may be shitty at sports, but they have some of the best, the best academics there is in the nation. You've got UCLA. You've mm-hmm. got USC. Um, Stanford. Stanford. I mean, dude, you've got some powerhouse education schools. Yeah. And if you, if you go to one of those schools on a full scholarship and you graduate, because let's face it, the, the chances of you going to the NFL – or slim, especially in the Pac-12, <laughs> you know. There haven't. I can't think slim. of a lot of really good, uh, great Pac-12 players. I can't yeah. either. Josh Rosen, I think, was the last one taken number one. He still hasn't really yeah, gotten a full where he season is. on yeah. a real team. No, like he's never played a full season on a real team. And Cal Berkeley is in uh, in uh, Pac-12 as well. That's where Aaron Rodgers came from. So yeah, that's a pretty good one. So with that, but you that were lucky to ago. get, in, uh, in my opinion, a scholarship offer from a Pac-12 school. Um, because if you complete the degree there, you can write your own ticket in life and you have access to the best fucking schooling that, you know, besides, I guess, the Ivy League that you mm. could probably do in this life. Therefore, to you to shit on like to shit on that and say, you know, we also want to make money off of this of like, hey, man, you go to the SEC, you're not getting the best education. You're going there to, to go pro. Right? Unless you're going to Vanderbilt, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Vanderbilt's a good school. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I personally side with the players anytime they want to get paid in college athletics, particularly football, because they make these universities billions of dollars a year. and They do. You have to understand that uh, as a player, I mean, you have to understand that, yes, most of that money is going to get used to – fund other programs at the university art programs and all this bullshit and other fucking varsity sports that can't afford to do it themselves this is how it is but they should be getting paid and they should tr- certainly and i think it's the case now in a lot of states already but i think it'll be a, becoming a widely held rule soon that they can profit on off their own likeness now right like that's going to have to become an ncaa wide rule because they're going to have to come up with w- ways to govern it to make sure weird shit's not happening sure um if you don't if you just if you treat it the way the federal government's treated marijuana, you're going to see the same bullshit. You're going to see, particularly with the, the vape pens and stuff, you're going to see a bunch of weird fucking sketchy off-brand shit all over the place that gets people sick all the time. Right. It's the same thing. If you don't regulate this in some way, like, it's coming. Yeah. It's coming, yeah, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, New York and California are already going to allow it. Various other fucking states are going to follow suit. I think mm-hmm. New Jersey already followed suit. It's going to keep happening unless you regulate it. People are not going to go to any of the other schools, first of all. Right. right. They're going to go. I want to go to a fucking California, New York team mm-hmm. because I can make fucking money now, particularly if you're one of those one and done people like college basketball. UCLA might be fucking in for some good news if that's the case. If it's only New York teams and California teams that can fucking profit off their likeness and you're a one year fucking recruit, you don't want to go to the G League. Like if Zion Williamson at Duke, if he had gone to like UCLA, he could have fucking made, I don't know, 20 million dollars in that one year. Probably. Well, I think he made that. Um, Not from Duke. Uh, he made, Well, he made what? Four hundred thousand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, stepdad did. Yeah, it's so um, stupid. But to me, once you start getting into asking the universities for money and everything else, like um, some, we have a Drinking Bros uh, Sports Facebook group. It's private, um, so you can see all of our live bets and uh, and all our bet, our betting slips from mybookie.com. dot uh, com. By the way, promo code Drinking Bros will double your deposit at uh, mybookie.com dot com. Been betting on some NBA over there, um, but a lot of our listeners wrote in and they said, you know. Look, man, if you want to get paid, if you're a basketball player in the Pac-12, you can go to the G League now, and mm-hmm. you're getting money for that. You know, what is it, a half a million dollar average if you're one of the top yeah. <clears throat> 50 prospects or whatever it is? I know a couple of kids from UCLA opted into that. 
and they decided to take the money and not play college basketball. Um, if you're a football player, s- skip it. Skip football. If, you, if you're that great and you think you're going to be pro, skip it then. If you feel like you don't need college and want to get paid, you can go to the CFL or, or whatever. High school basketball players have been doing this for years now, especially those fucking ball kids. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, like the <clears throat> if you're if you're the NBA, I guess there's some benefit to having um, more of your people. And by, when I say your people, I mean 17 to 19 year olds who didn't want to go to college. Instead, they're going to play in the European League to get some exposure over there. Yeah. To like, because it worked in China. Playing those games in China fucking blew that market up. LeBron James and Steph Curry are fucking heroes yep. over there. They've made billions of dollars off that brand. As a matter of fact, Kobe was the first one to, to tap was, yeah, into yeah. that yeah. years uh, and years ago. When Curry Curry's uh, franchise value, which means how much, uh, like if you were to buy all of his buy out all of his advertising, as, for lack of a better phrase, um, from what he does on the court for the Warriors to what he does personally, his value for Under Armour alone started out at about one point one billion. After he started doing those China trips, it went mm-hmm. up to fourteen billion dollars. Yeah, that's how much he's worth to Under Armour. That's a fucking incredible amount of money. So it'd be dumb of them to ignore that shit, but. Also, I would prefer, if I'm the NBA, I want them in the G League. I want all those guys playing in the G League because Same. that becomes a whole other fucking revenue stream. Yes. And people will fucking watch it. If, it's, if you were seeing... If you were seeing Zion in the Zion G League? Zion and, and Barrett and fucking Bull Bull and all these guys playing yeah. in the G League instead of fucking going to one year of college or whatever the fuck, they would, the NBA would fucking crush. Uh, and like on the other side so of this, money. with college basketball, I love college basketball. I love March Madness. I think it's awesome. That shit's over. Well, here's the thing. So let's say you have all the best players going to the G League, right? Mm-hmm. And then you have the other guys who are grinding it out, either hoping to get to the NBA, um, or they just love basketball and they want a free education. Mm-hmm. I, I would rather see teams again play for years together, mm-hmm. you know, two or three years together, that mm-hmm. I can get behind, rather than the one-and-done kids who come in and fuck it up every year where it's like, you take a, a Kentucky, mm-hmm. right? They're churning out five, six NBA players a year. Yeah, They're not winning championships, no. um, but... But what they're doing is every year five or six people leave, and then you start over with a brand new team. It is hard to get excited about their team every year because you're not you're not figuring out who these guys even are mm-hmm. until halfway through the season. I would love to see that happen to college basketball again, where I don't care if it's a bunch <clears throat> of scrappy guys as long as they're going to be there for three years. Um, that's what I love about college football. At least it's yeah. mandatory that they're there for three years, and I can get behind these guys, follow their career, um, and enjoy them for three years and understand uh, uh, what they do as players and what they could do potentially in the NFL. I like that. Um, I think the danger in paying college athletes is this. I I think they should be getting more money, by the way, Mm -hmm. because I've been involved in this system very, very briefly. Um, I got a bunch of fucking offers out of high school. It was like to play football. It was like 110 or something crazy. You get three visits to NCAA schools Mm -hmm. and uh, you learn where the money's going on your, your, uh, you get, like Ohio State was a Buck ID card, so mm. you get this Buck ID, and it's got a certain amount of money on it for for food and cafeteria shit mm. and everything else, and books and everything else. But uh, for for a normal kid who's playing on a football team, who's coming from a you know an inner city mm. high school or whatever, that's not enough, man. Yeah. Um, and they need to give them more money to live and go out because the NCAA does not allow you to have jobs. So I do think the athletes deserve. A per diem, if you will, um, yeah. to go out to have fun, to to spend money and go to fucking, you know, dinners or bars or, or whatever you want to do in your free time, <clears throat> because there is no fucking free time when you play for a big time school like that. So I am in agreement where there should be some sort of some form of stipend that they get quarterly. I just don't think so they're they going to be go com- out. I don't think that product is going to be competitive unless they can keep the best players in college. For basketball, yep, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Um, but I think it's they're going to lose millions and millions of dollars by not being competitive. They they would I feel like they would lose more by not paying people than they would by paying people. Well, I I, I go back and look at it to the late '90s, I guess, because this was kind of the the craze of it, right? Remember, it was like uh, Kobe. I, I was too young to remember any of that. But yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was I think it was eight years old. Yeah. Um, I was born in '91 and uh, I was eight, so I remember part mm. of it, but. Um, uh, you go back to Kobe and Kevin Garnett 
and uh, and all those guys that were leaving early, Tracy McGrady going yeah, like into the NBA. Fucking stars. All of those people. Superstars. Stars. That's right? that's why I never had a problem with because only the very, very best people can even attempt that. Correct. Like um, no NBA team is gonna waste one of their fifteen roster spots on some fucking dum dum. Right. But during that point, because that, that's what I thought, you know, college basketball was going to be over, right? Yeah. Um, and LeBron, LeBron left, you know, obviously. Um, it wasn't because it was the other guys who weren't good enough. Therefore, they had to fucking bust ass. And it, those were great years for college basketball. Yeah, but that, there's a big gap between the very best, like, v- like certain Hall of Famers. And I don't know if Tracy McGrady will make the Hall of Fame. Yes. Yes, he um, will. But I feel like he should, yeah. frankly. But um, there's a big gap between LeBron James and somebody like uh, fucking, I don't know, who, who's around right now. Uh, LeBron James, like Steph Curry, a guy that could not just d- just because of his size could not have played in the NBA when he was fucking eighteen years old. No, he way. needed college. Yeah, yeah. So there's a big difference between those two, mm-hmm. and then the gap between Steph Curry and the people left over after G League takes all the good talent. In my opinion, right? Like I think if if I'm a guy that's like if you use baseball uh, draft grades like uh, one through eighty, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if I'm a guy who's like in the sixties on everything, shooting, fucking defense, all that stuff. That's not a guy that can go straight to the NBA, but it is a guy who can go to the G League, and I can choose to either go to a school and have 100% of my time focused uh, on a bunch of different shit to going somewhere where I'm getting paid, and 100% of my time is focused on basketball. You can always go back to fucking college, man. If you're making if you're making $100,000 a year, and you're fucking... Because when, when you're on... When you're in the G League, when you're in a fucking NBA program like that, <clears throat> they're paying for all your food, all your travel, fucking your housing half of the time, depending on what's going on. You're not spending a lot of money unless you're an idiot. You can save $60,000 somewhere over the course of three years trying to make it to the actual NBA where you make millions and go back to school at any point. So right. I, th- I think it's, it's a way better deal for the kids. And I don't know what college has to offer at that point. So only it's going to be a, a bunch of fucking like the late nine or early 2000s Princeton teams. Where they have a bunch of fucking, I mean, it's basically the WNBA at that point. It's a bunch of fucking semi-athletic people with great fundamentals. And let's be honest, I don't want to watch, I like the movie Hoosiers. Right. But I don't want to watch that team play. It's boring as shit. I want to watch people jump from the goddamn half-court line and dunk with their fucking nuts dragging across some dude's forehead the whole time. You know what I mean? I think you'll still get it because there's a lot of these kids that go to smaller high schools and things like that. um, And... They just don't get a lot of hype. Yeah. Um, I, I, I really believe you'll still get it. Um, Maybe. I, so overall, with this Pac-12 shit, right, I think, yes, these players need a stipend to play. Financially, they should not be making millions of fucking dollars in college because, it, look, it's still college. And in the Pac-12, you're getting the very best education you possibly can. So uh, my personal opinion on this is this was the wrong fucking time to do it, the wrong conference to mm-hmm. do it. And, you know, <clears throat> a Pac-12 – school making a list of demands like this is worthless yeah you really got to know what your bargaining power is before you do something like that basically you're asking for ransom and you don't even have a hostage right because no one gives two fucks about you all right that's why all these coaches are like sure join the unity thing you're off the team yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like it's it was that quick like it was no that fast yeah, yeah so was, all right good luck guys um so <laughs> fuck guys i don't get the sec involved um pac 12 you're not the ones to do it and uh, it won't know, matter anyways. I mean, the Pac. I think maybe the Pac-12 just realizes it's irrelevant. Maybe uh, the other part of this that uh, one of our listeners asked, and and um, uh, I'll I'll, I'll kind of check your temperature on this, so to speak. Do it um, because I don't want to. I, I will definitely rectally take your temperature yeah, yeah. on this. But uh, do you know what the difference between an oral and a rectal thermometer is? By the way, uh, good time. The taste. <laughs> That's an old Andrew Dice Clay joke. Anyway, continue. Nailed it. Um, someone brought this up, and I don't want to go too heavy into politics here, uh, but uh, they said, hey, man, do you ever notice that it's just the fucking entire West Coast that's asking for fucking free shit again? It's not free shit, though. They're generating billions of dollars. I, I understand, but something that they don't have already, and this, is, this seems to be a theme. Look, you have SEC, you have uh, USC and uh, UCLA, both in Los Angeles. <clears throat> I mean, USC is true. There is, there is no bigger free, I need free shit city on the planet than Los Angeles, maybe Portland and Seattle. 
Yeah. But then all these schools, though, all the Pac-12 schools, look, you're, you're Washington, Washington State, Oregon. Like, no it's one, where every protest and every fucked up thing is happening. And it's yeah. like. It's only a matter of time before that shit's like, because of COVID, it hasn't really spilled onto college campuses because nobody's there. But it will. Yeah. It certainly will. Oh, yeah. And that'll be interesting uh, to see. Speaking of that, provided everything works out tomorrow, we're going to have James Klug on the show. Okay. Uh, he's uh, kind of like a street reporter, conservative guy. Yeah. Not that I care about his politics, but he's, he just spent a, a week in Portland with the protesters on the ground. There. Can't wait. So that should Is he going to be on the show tomorrow? It should be very elucidating for us, yeah. Uh, that would be um, great. And there's also a guy, a drinking bro, who's a uh, – I don't want to say what his job is, but he's in law enforcement out there. He's going to give me a bunch of shit soon, too. That'd be fantastic. Kind of see what's going on up there. One of the things that's happening is they're bundling fireworks together and gluing nails inside of them and then putting more fireworks on the outside, lighting it off. Boom. That's an ID, by the way. That's a fun thing. And throwing balloons full of uh, piss and shit. Why is it all white people in Portland that are protesting? Well, because there's only white people in Portland. (laughs) Mm. I by Look the way, how woke we are. We don't, we don't even allow black people to live here. That's yeah. basically what they've got going on in Portland. Portland's a shithole. Seattle is a shithole. There's no reason to ever go to either one of those places. No. Honestly, they fucking suck. No. Uh, Every, s- everything that's there that's cool, I can order on the internet. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. get fucked. Speaking of people getting woke um, and going broke, the MLB and NBA ratings have crashed after opening days. <clears throat> and uh, everybody's wondering yeah. if it's because... There's too much uh, politics. I don't think so. In sports. I don't think so. I think it's weird for people uh, to watch it the way it's being broadcast. If Because it, the MLB hasn't done any of that. Well, so they that, kneeled on the first day with the Giants. And a lot of people were no, pissed No, people pissed expected that out of San that. Francisco. I, I, I agree with you. Look, I, I'm with you. As a, as a fan of sports, and the NBA in particular, um, watching every single second with a political message either jammed in my face or on the back of someone's mm-hmm. jersey is a little too much for me, man. I, I tune <clears> into <throat> sports for entertainment solely. I, I deal with politics and world news the rest of my fucking day, and, and I don't want to see it in sports. Mm-hmm. I don't. And I know the athletes are saying, well, this is our platform. We're going to use it however we want. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But also, it's everybody else's right not to watch. <clears throat> yeah, it's a product at the end of the day. It, it is entertainment at the end of the day. It is not the military it is not something fucking serious that you could lose your life over yeah um inside an, an nba game if you want to go out and protest in the streets absolutely mm-hmm. but you know when you have a black lives matter logo ingrained in the court every single jersey has a social justice message on the back of it um yeah i mean it's a little concerning that very few uh powerful black people involved in any of this have addressed the concerns that the vast majority of Americans have about the organization Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. Not about the cause, obviously, but about the fact that the le- leaders of this organization are all like, as, like they're Marxists. They're like espousing fucking communist ideology all the time. Like, well, that is, you had me for like the 80, first 80% and this bullshit you attached onto it. Right. Not here for it. I think it's a problem for people. Like, we, I, the, the very first rant I did on this subject, like the week after Floyd got killed, the week that Floyd got killed, was like, hey, everybody's got to fucking admit what's fucked up here. Yeah. Like, you got to admit that there's a problem. If you're a white conservative, if you're a black Democrat, whatever the fuck you are, you have to admit that your movement is being co-opted by assholes. Mm-hmm. That, and it's the same shit every time. We see it, like, even during COVID, we see uh, these uh, uh, leftists that are grasping for more control under the government. Like, we want to fucking be the ones paying you right now. That's essentially a de facto backdoor way of seizing the means of production. That's goddamn communism, motherfucker. We're not doing it here. Sorry. Yeah. You can get fucked with that bullshit. So, um, and it's, here's the problem. That movement has to be, for all intents and purposes, beyond reproach because there's assholes in the world. They're going to be like, see, now I don't have to fucking believe that. You can't alienate the people that you're trying to fucking bring into the fold. Mm. That's not, that's bad strategy to do that. It's fucking stupid. It'll never work. Like, it's this is basically... Advertising. You're advertising a position to people, and you need them to believe it for us to move forward. And it's true, but you still have to message it in a way that's going to be that it, people will be receptive to on that other side. If your whole this is why Hillary Clinton lost in 2016. She went out and called fucking 50 percent of the country deplorables. Yeah, like you can't do that and win. Sorry, because you need people in the middle. And if you can't get people in the middle, they're they're the ones like 
two fucking people on opposite like uh, ends of the spectrum are going to hate each other. But the closer you get, the more in common you have with those people. And it takes those people in the middle, center right, center left, to bring people over to new ideas. That's what it takes to do that. And all they're doing is fucking alienating people right now. It doesn't make any sense to me. Everybody's aware. We're all aware of what's happening. Let's do some shit to fucking fix it now. Yeah, and I, I me personally, I just don't want to see it in sports. Like, for Well, that's never going to happen. You know that. Hours on end. but, but It's just not going to happen. Here's the thing. You want to protest and take a fucking knee before the game starts? Like... Fine, but as the game is happening, for two and a half hours, I got to watch a basketball game and yeah. see fucking eight million political messages. Well, you know like, what they should do with the NBA? They should, uh, um, you know how on Netflix, when the next episode starts, you can hit that little skip yeah, re- yeah, yeah, recap yeah. thing, yeah. <laughs> button to skip virtue signaling in television. And it just automatically, like, click. It automatically learns your behavior. Anytime it sees some kind of bullshit going on, zip, just fucking fast forward through that bullshit. Oh, it'd be great. I, I just, you know, fuck, man. I'm one of those people where I've missed sports so much. Mm-hmm. So is everybody else. Um, we also love to gamble on sports because it's fun. And I think the games have been competitive. And mm-hmm. I enjoy it. But the, the, the politics of watching a two-and-a-half-hour game and that just being jammed into my mind over and over and over again, I'm just like, yeah. fucking A. <clears throat> Stop showing me that. Um, the other part I, that I had a problem with on opening night when we were watching the uh, Lakers-Clippers game was technically it was a home game for the Lakers, although they're all playing on the same courts. Right. Um, I think the system they have set up is great. I, I think visually watching the NBA with the, the even the fake digital fans and all that stuff and the crowd noise they've pumped in is fine. I, it, it does not take me out of it whatsoever. It does. Baseball does for it, me a little bit. It doesn't with baseball at all for me, and it does for basketball. I think that basketball. I mean, I can I can see the baseball thing being a problem over time because part a big part of the game has been fan interaction and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, here lately, with all the nets going up, I think that's way down the list now. Baseball's already been transitioning out of that fan experience at the game, so I don't think I missed it that much. And the NBA. Players are falling into the crowd all the time. There's celebrities on the floor yeah. that are talking shit or whatever the fuck. There's super fans that are at every game and all that stuff. I think it's way more important in basketball than it is in baseball. And it's kind of fucking with my head. Um, maybe. To watch I, I look at it like the Olympic Games. Like Some of those crowds weren't very big for some of those basketball Olympics. Yeah. I don't mind. And the games <clears> have been great. Like Opening night's game was, was great. Uh, the Clippers and, and the Lakers. Mm. Um, but um, when the playoffs come around, you know, I'll, I'll check back in to it. But uh, they've got to do something with just toning down the fucking rhetoric a little bit, man. I mean, for the casual fan who, again, goes to sports for entertainment and Mm -hmm. to escape the bullshit that's going on in the world, um, it's tough to see that over and over again where you're just like, man, is there one place that I can fucking turn to that I don't have to worry about politics or president or any of the serious things that are going on in the world? Because that's what sports is to me. Same with movies. Man, um, and that's what I've I shit on Hollywood for all the time, uh, you know, with the, with the get woke go broke shit, mm-hmm. where it's like, man, you want to inject diversity and trans and all this other shit into your movies and plot lines, where it doesn't just it just doesn't make sense to yeah. do it. Um, I'm checking out of those shows and movies as well, where I'm like, man, I'm I'm good. I don't need to hear what your politics are. Well, I, I think maybe it's just a case of bad writing is bad writing. You know what I mean? Like I can I can tell when something didn't belong somewhere. There's yeah. there's plenty of stuff where the trans thing just flows through the story naturally, and it's a it's still like Orange Is the New Black, for example. Sure. Like that nobody it wasn't a big deal that that happened uh, because yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. And the reason yeah. it wasn't a big deal isn't because they didn't fucking promote it because they did. The reason it wasn't a big deal is because the writing was good. And it fucking was part of the actual like the, it wasn't some fucking uh, coal mining family in, in Pennsylvania dealing with a trans person coming out of the closet and making that the focal point of the whole show it was just like normalized. Sure. Which is probably, you know, should be the goddamn point uh. if you're doing that, if you're trying to take responsibility. I would ask NBA teams and the players as well to look at how much money they're losing from all this stuff mm-hmm. and think about maybe going back and acting, you know, normally and using the money that they saved or reacquire from that to actually start helping human beings and not fucking talking shit on television, right? Like, instead of just like, oh, look how fucking I'm taking part. I'm doing stuff. You're not doing shit, motherfucker, unless you're LeBron James. Yeah. Unless unless you're paying for people's educations or starting small businesses so people can develop some sort of upward mobility, you're not doing a goddamn thing. All you're doing is fucking running your suck hole. 
Not at all, man. And and I'm going to read off uh, the ratings here for. Um, we'll go last Friday on on ESPN when uh, MLB kicked off. Uh, Mets Braves at four o'clock, nine hundred twenty-two thousand. Oof. Uh, Brewers at the Cubs was the game afterwards that hit a million. Uh, Angels A's at that 10 p.m. slot, 797,000. Um, Celtics Bucks NBA, uh, 1.3 million. What day of the week was that on? Uh, last night. Um, and then uh, uh, the night before. Mavs versus Rockets uh, was 1.7. Um, these are on TNT? Uh, these are on ESPN. Mm. So, like, dude, these games typically are in the three to four range. Mm. So, I mean, you're 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 lost half your fucking audience at a time <coughs> where there is nothing, nothing on television that we haven't seen yeah. at this point. Well, that, that people are starving for content. That Lakers Rockets game was in prime time on network. It was on ABC. It oh, was they, on a, but by the way, and they put that everywhere. Yeah, yeah. ABC, ESPN. It yeah. was on. Four different channels, and it still only did two point nine. That should be that's an average show. Yes, like for on TNT on a random Thursday during the NBA season, like in fucking February and March, that's an average fucking show. Not for this at all. To put it in ratings perspective, Lil Dicky show on FX mm -hmm. averages on a Thursday night four point eight million yeah. viewers, and and that not even on FX. That's just on Hulu. That's what his average is per show. Lil Dicky is doubling. The ratings of LeBron James in the NBA mm -hmm. um, for a half-hour comedy show. Yeah. That's that's where we're at right now. So if you don't take a long, hard look at this, you can be as political as you want. Mm -hmm. um, but there's consequences. There's going to be a, a lot of consequences. Like, what can you do more with your fucking uh, your status in the community from flexing on social media and, and kneeling at games, or the fucking money? Where you yeah. can build, you can fucking get people educated, start them in career paths, not jobs, but careers, mm -hmm. and get them fucking started in small businesses, which emancipates people financially. Yeah. Like, that's the fucking way to do this shit. That's how every fucking other race or ethnicity has done it in America. Mm -hmm. They fucking found careers. And back in the day, it was like fucking stonemasons or building ships or fucking making booze or whatever the fuck, right? Right. And then they fucking started doing these people moved to different parts of the country, started their own version of that business where they had a career in, and that's how they became financially independent. And that's what every fucking single group of human beings in any country needs. Yeah. Like, there's there's mountains of data that shows when we were looking into uh, getting involved in the economies of third world countries during the Cold War, one of the biggest indicators of a country turning around and becoming uh, not not just capitalist, but freer, like with more liberty, is the financial security of women, like the, their ability to enter the workforce and make careers for themselves. That's one of the number one indicators for that shit. Why would that not be the number one indicator for any group of people then, right? Financial independence is important to make sure that the government never has too much control. Mm -hmm. That's the whole fucking reason this country was like built. Yeah. Right? So what the fuck are we doing here? You can't apply that simple goddamn 240-year-old lesson to a modern problem, you're a fucking idiot. That's why all these people in D.C. need to get fucked. Every single one of them. I agree. Um, by the way, f uh, I want to bring up the NHL because I, I think this is a league that has gotten it right. They don't um, give two fucks, dude. But again, they benefit from being the dirtiest bitches on earth. They do. Like, but Brent Burns is not getting COVID. He'll fucking take his fucking front two teeth out and bite COVID's dick off. Yeah, I, but here's the thing. Looking at the ratings, right? Because there's no protest. There's yeah. no nothing. There's not nothing in the back of their jerseys in the NHL. Um, you know, you're looking at the Canadians Penguins game. That was the NFL restart or the NHL restart game. Yeah. I couldn't name one fucking Canadians player. I couldn't on their fucking roster. Um, I c I can't name one. Was it a one point five seven two? That's good for it's hockey. Great for hockey. Yeah. It's great for them. Hockey. Hockey usually like their playoff games are about three, so that's not bad for a not at all. Game, yeah. For for the restart and their restart was on uh, NBC, SNL, SN, fucking ninety S whatever channel that is. It's that, NBC Sports Network. Yeah, good luck finding that. Um, you got to have a fucking app for that or uh, Carmen San Diego because um, I, I the, both of them I can't find. Has she been found? No, it's her and fucking John Benet Ramsey still missing. Yeah, JBR, JBR. That are still missing. Yeah, yeah. No, J they found JBR. Oh, was it just was a pile of house. bones or She's what? She was dead. She was oh, dead I, no, I thought her. I thought she went missing completely. Talking about uh, Casey Anthony's daughter. 
No, they found them. They didn't find her bones or whatever the they fuck? They found her bones. In yes. a car. Yes. So what the fuck happened with John Benet Ramsey then? Uh, the, I'm going to say this carefully. I um, thought she went missing entirely and they never found her body. And no. So she was dead and in the house. And she's in Florida with Tupac. No. She's dead in the house. No. They, they blunt force trauma. They're saying the brother did it, but uh, I thought the parents no proof. did it. Well, they're saying the parents covered up for the brother because they don't want to lose both children, but I don't know the answer to that. That's basically season one of Veronica Mars. So, And the parents are dead. Well, JBR was first. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the 90s, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't want to fucking steal thunder. Obviously. I'm just dead girl. Obviously. Don't, um, don't do that. Um, never wait, thought what? John Benet Ramsey would pop up in a sports I show. I don't know why are. I'm even talking about that. Oh, you were talking about something. Some other person that went This missing. is turning into Post Malone, Joe Rogan interview. Where you I haven't taken mushrooms today yet. Okay. Yet. Okay. Uh, but I will. <laughs> if it'll make the show better. See, that's what you do. You work hard for your craft. You don't fucking take knees to try to make a point. You Goddamn fucking right. You dunk basketballs and you use the money to help people. Yes. I dunk uh, weird ass jokes. And, and drugs. And drugs about the Holocaust. Yeah. Or jokes about the Holocaust and drugs. And then use that money to give back to the community. Yes. By give back to the community, I mean get real fucked up. Yep. And then let them watch me. Your drug dealing community. Well, yeah. And, uh, and I support that. That's another Jack group. in the Box. They've just been uh, Jack in the Box tacos. Can we talk about that for? Is a minute? there? Are they in Texas? Yeah, there's one like right across the street from our studio. <laughs> oh, are they in the studio? Oh, yeah. Is it really? God damn. But there's it, man. also a P Terry's there. That's the best yeah, hamburger. That's so directly next door. It's if I want hamburgers, away. then I'll go to P Terry's. If I want tacos. Uh, it's, go to, it's Austin. You yeah, can find a taco exactly, anywhere. Everywhere. You can find great tacos anywhere. I, uh, we get some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon yeah. to be on the air, by the way. Uh, first and foremost, KillCliffCBD.com. Uh, they are our fucking chief sponsor. Do we even have any here? They Georgia are drink all of them. chief sponsor. Dickhole. Uh, I think it's all drinking. Everybody who comes here Drinking is it. definitely not a word. No, it's not. I don't know. It's definitely not a word. I use so much slang lingo that it's like I just it's my own vernacular and I don't really fucking care. Uh, but people drank the shit out of that. Every time somebody comes to the studio, first thing they go for is that Kill Cliff CBD. Or they're stealing or the fucking, fucking Felix, Felix Grey glasses. Assholes. Um, those are gone, dude. And uh, I get it. It's the best in the biz. I have a can every single night. I had a can during the hurricane last night to calm my nerves down. Did you drink it or did you uh, go rectal? I drank it. Mm. Yeah, I didn't go rectal. Should have gone rectal. Probably would have stopped the hurricane. Probably. Probably. But it I gives you my, superpowers. I use my bare fist. I don't want to make any medical claims about our sponsor Obviously here, not. But if you either. pour Kill Cliff CBD into your butthole, I feel like it probably gives you superpowers of some sort. Probably. Right? Probably. Uh, you're not going to piss hot for THC either. Even um, if you put it in your butt, yeah. Even if you put it in your yeah. butt, you're good to go on that. Three awesome flavors, uh, mango, grape. Grape is my mm. fucking jam. Uh, and the orange kush. Throw that in with a little vodka. You are good to go. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. Promo code Drinking Bros. Gets you 20% off and free shipping at KillCliffCBD.com. Best in the biz. Next the up, we've got MyBookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros will double your deposit. They're back to doubling people's deposits. Um, I've been making weird bets, man, and posting them on Drinking Bros Sports on Facebook. I was betting like I bet that NBA game, the Rockets game. The other I day. was I was betting some weird shit. Hold on, let me look it up. Actually, keep keep going. It was uh, yeah, it was it was Friday night, and because uh, every day somebody will hit me up in there and be like, "Hey, man, what's what's your bet for the night?" And I'm like, "Eh." Uh, there's times where I'm only going to bet on shit, by the way, if I, if I feel that you can win. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. I'm not just going to bet on shit so you guys can lose. So they have all stupid. these prop bets, right, for, yep. each sing, for each game, like 12 prop bets per game. Correct. And one of them is, uh, one of the prop bets is, will this game, there's plenty of examples of this, yeah. but will the game go into overtime? And the fucking odds, or the line is plus. Through the roof. It's plus 980. Which yeah. means I can spend I can, just, I can put ten bucks down, even if I'm a if I just want to fucking put a hundred bucks down in yeah. a week. I could pick a couple of these crazy ones, put ten on each one of them, and that's I, I make fucking a hundred bucks back. Yeah, that. like that. Those are good bets to make if you're just trying to grind it out and make money. Yeah, the other night I bet on the uh, the Rockets game against the Mavs, and uh, I threw that up because I always put the betting slips in Drinking Bros Sports. Mm -hmm. Um, those are where our actual <clears throat> bets go, so that way you know what, what I'm actually betting on. And yeah. I'll put them on and be like, hey, man, here's where I'm going with tonight. Um, Rockets came back in overtime. Thriller. Great yeah. game. Uh, won me that bet. And, um, man, the UFC is back. There's some fucking bangers coming up, dude. Stipe versus Cormier. Uh, it's coming up here in about two weeks. Yeah, I'm you guys probably saw that. Stipe on on the Because We Can show the other night mm -hmm. on with John Briggis uh, on the Drinker Bros podcast Facebook page. Yeah, Stipe was on there. Unfortunately, I was not. We were flying that we were day. Flying that yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
There's some other good bets out there too, like this uh, Orlando tonight. This Orlando Magic. Shit, this this episode won't be live by then, will it? Uh, eight o'clock. No, that eight game o'clock. starts at six. What, who's who are they playing? It's Orlando Magic versus the Pacers, but it's uh the the spread or the money uh money line is one thirty minus one thirty. Orlando's gonna fucking win, but the be- the better bet is the over under. I don't know, and I'll, here, so here's the deal. There's this guy from uh, Indiana <clears throat> who's been dropping fucking forty points a game. This no name <clears throat> guy. And yeah, I saw that. What's his fucking name? I, <laughs> No one knows. Um, Aubrey or something. I, who knows? Um, either way, I get, everybody's got a different name on the back of their jersey, so I don't, I don't fucking know who they are. Um, but uh, he's been dropping 40 points a game on people, and it's been a blast to watch um, while Oladipe, Victor Oladipe, has been out. And um, it's fun. I, I don't touch games like that because I don't know what's going to happen. It's TJ Warren. TJ Warren. Yeah, he's it. lighting it up. Yeah. But crushing that, it, but I, I again, <clears throat> I don't even know who that person was until no. the restart happened, and it was just like, all right, he's lighting people the fuck up. He's twenty six. I stay away from uh, games like that. Me personally. Well, but, here's um, the reason: the, the I, NHL playoffs are a blast to bet on. They are, yeah. I'm not betting on the Magic winning. By the way, I think they are going to win, but I'm betting on the over under. So, fourteen of the last or fourteen consecutive games they've been involved in, the total for both teams over has uh, has won for them. That's a good fucking run to be on. And when they're playing a guy that's fucking on fire like that, like Warren is, mm-hmm. you can bet like the over under for the game uh, for both teams is two twenty five and a half. Like it's that's a fucking one ten one fifteen sure. or one sixteen game or something like that. Yeah. That's definitely going to happen. So I would I, those those are the bets that I'm doing right now. Yeah, just to there, keep, there's been a lot of high scoring games going on in the yeah. NBA. Nobody's playing defense yet. I don't think anybody's in good no. enough shape to play good defense yet. And look, it, it's nice that they have eight games. To yeah. kind of get in shape and figure it the fuck out. Yeah, the teams really, that, that should be there are, are going to be there in the playoffs. Yeah. And uh, and I think you're fine with that. NBA action is going to be a blast to bet on uh, playoff wise. NHL is. is a blast. I still to bet wish on. they would have done. I won't. The I still won't tournament. do daily MLB shit. Like, you know, with the COVID and everything else, man, I just I don't bet on it. Um, yeah, it's I don't too even much. Know who's playing. Each individual player is too valuable in MLB. Like. So Braves my, lost Soroka. Mike Soroka, yeah, yeah. Like I would have last night. Generally speaking, if that was a playoff game, I would have bet that game Same. for Soroka to win. No, no question. Hundred percent, because he wins ninety percent of his starts. But um, you never know when some stupid shit like that's going to happen. No, and, and we'll we'll up. get to the MLB uh, after the the last sponsor mm-hmm. here. But uh, go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. We'll double your deposit, and you can bet with us or against us on there. And then sign up for the Facebook group. Uh, it's free. Um, and you, you can uh, see our actual bets as I post all my betting slips in there. Uh, last but not least, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 30% off. If you are a member of the military, a first responder, uh, work for the government, or are a teacher in this life, if you're a regular dumb dumb civilian like myself, you get 25% off. And, and uh, right now, if you order a mattress, you're getting two free pillows. Um, man, that cooling mattress is the fucking business, especially in this heat right now. It is very humid here. My nuts are stuck to my fucking legs. Yeah, like duct tape. Yeah. Duct tape nuts. Um, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today, where as always, they got a 36 month pay as you go program. No interest on this. And if you're stuck in one of these cities where you're, you're going to be in the house for a while, I promise you, man, um, a great mattress and great pillows is, uh, is really going to help get you through this. Um, that'll knock it down like 30 bucks a month. You can bundle all that shit together. All the deals that I said at the top are fucking applicable. Um, with the 36 month pay as you go program, no interest at ghostbed.com <laughs> forward slash drinking bros. The MLB, Dan, um, is, has been a fucking disaster. Uh, we're 10 games in now, and it feels like they're limping towards the end, and there's mm-hmm. still 50 games left to go. What happens with this? Are they going to complete this fucking season? Um, I don't know. Manfred is like basically like, we're not pussies, we're not leaving. That's Which essentially I like. what he said. You know I always like that. Yeah, I don't However, know. However, the Cardinals came down. Half their fucking team came down with COVID. Um, yeah. I, I don't know who's playing night in and night out. I don't know if they're going to have – I don't know if each team is going to play 60 complete games, but I think they'll get through the season, yeah. You do? Uh, yeah. And I, I I, love these bets too, man. Like the prop bets on my bookie for baseball are crazy as shit. Like you can yeah. – a uh, uh, run scored in every inning. That doesn't mean every half inning. Yeah. That means at least one run scored is by either team in each of nine innings, plus ten thousand. 
You can put one dollar down on that every single day. Yeah. And at and some win, point win before $10, you reach ten thousand, you're definitely gonna fucking win. Yeah. Some somebody will do it. Yeah. Um, breaking news, by the way, uh, Rafael Nadal won't play in the U.S. Open over uh, coronavirus concerns. T- t- tennis. What What are you worried about in tennis? Um, probably just the travel, to be honest. Uh, maybe. Maybe. But take Take your own boat. Go no. fucking Cuban style. Get yourself a little raft and float over. Yeah. Um, but uh, that'll be a good workout too. With with the with the fucking MLB going on right now, man. I don't know who's playing night in and night out. Uh, Cespedes just woke up on Saturday and was like, "No, nah, I think I'm all done." Decided yeah, he, not to tell the team. He decided to go ahead and fucking cancel the season, <laughs> but he didn't let anybody else know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's super funny. Uh, people Actually. thought he was missing at one point. He goes, "Oh no, I thought what you do is you just not show up and then." People know that you've you've opted out of the season and you've, and you've quit. I don't know, man. That, uh, was, that, is that was super weird. He's like, I was weird. watching the game and and Jeff Francoeur is like talking about it because it was yeah. the Braves broadcast. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 I don't. I mean, I hope he's okay, but like, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Like, what do he's you, a weird guy. What do you even say? Yeah, he's always been weird. What are you What are you gonna do with these fucking people? So, the MLB to me, I, I don't know if you're still watching. I've I have checked out. I don't know anybody who's playing anymore. None of these schedules have stuck. <clears throat> Half the teams are getting canceled daily. Like I, 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 I watch, can't get behind it. I watch most, mostly every day. But I, I mean, for me, it's like I watch baseball. Yeah, you know what I mean, I understand it. But I mean, you know, you look at some of these records too. Right now, you're ten games in. The Angels, who should have the best team on the planet. Yeah, Mike Trout, Natani, and those guys, three and seven. Yep. Three and seven, for and the also Angels. nobody's watching them play, even on television. No, like at least they sell out their stadium most of the time. But now nobody even now like usually they don't get a lot of viewers on TV because they play late as fuck. I don't know why they don't just play earlier in the day. Baseball, yes, yeah. I, look, they've got some day games going on right now that are live. Yankees are eight and one. I'm wearing a Yankees hat, obviously, but uh, uh, for my wife. It's my, my wife's favorite team. Um, they still have a couple of injuries, don't they? They do, like they're man. Not even I, look, full strength it, on paper, we've talked about this numerous times. On paper, it should be Yankees Dodgers World Series, right? They've got the two best teams. It's it should, uh, should certainly be the Yankees. I mean, they have they're they're Paxton Cole and uh, Tanaka. That's a good one one through three. I mean, Paxton could be better, but um, Tanaka proved last year that he's good in the playoffs too. But like, man, the fucking Glyber Torres and fucking Gary Sanchez, Stanton, Judge, those guys, that's just a fucking – and DJ LeMay, who's a goddamn second baseman. I can, yeah. I can forget about that guy. Um, they hit so many fucking home runs. Torres. I mean, shit. Yeah, Glyber Torres, yeah. Um, but, you know, when you're searching around through the National League and you're going through the standings of, of Major League Baseball right now, let's just take the National League East, for example, mm-hmm. right? Braves have played 11 games. Um, so they've got forty nine games seven and four? left. Yeah, they're seven and four. Now, next underneath that is Miami and Marlins at two and one. They've played three games, so they have eight games to catch up. To yeah, how the are Braves. they going to decide at the end of the season how to end things? Philadelphia Phillies are one and three. Well, you know they're right doing now. these. They uh, played four fucking games. They're doing these seven inning double headers now, which is a, a new fun thing. If you were at home. Uh, playing a game of make 'em up with some dice, and you said, eh, "Let's do this." Well, technically, what the f- fuck uh, is a seven inning? An official game? game is anything over five innings. It is seven inning games. Is, this is not new. Baseball has done this before. They have, but but usually during a rain delay or some type of violent weather. Well, I mean, what's the difference between a rain delay and a COVID delay? Essentially, it's still like bad. It's you still can't play the game. You so can you make play the extra two innings in this uh, on a double header. Like this is fucking. I don't know why right? they're doing it. Maybe because they're going to do so many. Um, but you know, as Ernie Banks says, it's always a good day to play too. So I don't. I don't it know. is, but two full games, not two seven inning games. Um, I don't know what they're. This gonna isn't do new though. Shit. They've done they've done seven inning double headers before for sure. When I can't remember it in my MLB's lifetime. done it a bunch over the last like five or ten years. <laughs> I don't. I, I somebody fact check that. I don't think that's true. <clears throat> um, I don't think they've ever done it. I think this oh, is yeah, new for COVID. Done. I can't remember a seven inning game. I can remember them shutting it down for weather problems, but um, uh, to my knowledge, they've never played a seven inning game unless it was uh, spring training when they were uh, trying to get shit popping off. But um, man, it, it's a fucking mess when you're making up your own rules and you're trotting out uh, teams for half the week. 
and then you're pushing the, 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 the rest of their schedules. You're on such a tight schedule already to try to make the playoffs mm. happen before the fucking snow kicks in in November. I don't, I, I don't know that you finished this thing. Maybe I'm thinking of the minor leagues. They've been doing this for years in the minor leagues. Maybe, yeah. Nothing in the major leagues. Because they definitely have, like, I'm reading it right now about them doing it in the minor leagues for years now. But Yeah. Uh, it's never happened in the major leagues. Uh, to me, why, why bother? Why fucking do it? Why play at this point? Because, I mean, if you're a coach and you're preparing your team for a nine-inning game and then mm-hmm. they're like, hey, guys, you're now playing seven, that affects your rotation. It affects um, all your relievers and anybody who's going to come into the <clears> game, like, it's just all if you're, fucking if you're, worthless. If you're running a five-man rotation and you're playing two double headers in a week, mm-hmm. that fucks everything up. Like, you have to go with a six-man rotation at that point, or you just have to let your fucking pitchers go deeper into the game and see what happens. I mean, technically, with a shorter game, you should be using less of your bullpen, but there, some teams this year so far have been, I think the Blue Jays mm-hmm. have been, are, and Tampa Bay's done it a couple times, too, with certain guys. Like, they run their starters out there for three innings, and that's it. I don't know if it's because they're trying to get the guys back in shape or if that's going to be the strategy for the year. I've always wondered why, if you can carry 12 pitchers on a team, why not have a guy for every two innings? You know what I mean? Right. Like, what, what's, the, what's the virtue of having a starting pitcher? Sure, if a guy's having a great game, leave him in. Yeah. And, and like, try to figure out where the cracks are going to happen and pull him out before that. Um, but what's the point of having a starting pitcher that goes nine innings or seven even? Like, what? It, it's not – a starting pitcher going seven innings is not any better than three pitchers all going two each and yeah. then fucking mopping up the rest somehow with your bullpen. Right. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know why anybody's never tried it, frankly. You know, I think it the will A's, also devalue pitchers, y- yeah, which would the, save the, them money. It would save teams money. Correct. A lot of money. And, and, I, and I believe the A's tried it. The problem is when you're going two innings, you know, every day or every other day like that, it's tough. You're, you're not always going to have your best shit. Um, I think the current system is fine. What I'd like to see is less of these and you had pitched this a while ago uh less of these games where you know you have five and six pitchers coming in well that's that yeah that rule is done now like when you come in now and you have to face three batters unless you're ending an inning or unless you get injured so it's not just covid like this is gonna be a permanent rule yeah this is a rule before i I like that because i'm I'm tired of people coming in for one out and it blowing up the game and everything else um i wonder what long-term effects no fans for all of this shit are going to have. Uh, there was something I read. You know, Ohio State came out the other day and said we're going to have twenty percent of mm. fans in the stands, and then immediately that got nuked by the governor, who said there will be no fans in any outdoor sporting events. Um, the Indy Five Hundred was like, "Hey, man, we're going to have fans in the stands as well." Mm. They just walked that back about an hour ago. They're not going to do that as well. I wonder the long-term effects of this. Like, if somebody like you <clears throat> who says that, hey, man, I am genuinely affected by not seeing fans out of sport, mm. and, and potentially <laughs> that's why some of the ratings are down, like, um, uh, how long can this go on with these ratings? Because the players certainly won't be able to get paid that much Look, m- things much have money. Look, things are always changing in sports. Base- and baseball is a good example of that. The ratings have fluctuated significantly since the early 90s, mm-hmm. right? Because there was... The early 90s were a little bit more, it was more pitching centric, and then all of a sudden it started to ramp up. Like, if you remember in that strike shortened 94 season, Matt Williams had 43 home runs at the break. Like, right. he was on pace to hit 65 or so home runs. He mm-hmm. would have broken the record that year, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Um, so, home runs were back on the rise. Dudes were juicing the fuck up. And then the strike happened and it fucking fell off the table for two years. Tony Gwynn was in. 400. He yeah, was he was hitting, yeah, he was hitting yeah. 404 or something yeah. at the time uh, that it went down. Or no, that was he, he went down to 397 that year, I think. Yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, that that could have happened. A lot of stuff was going on then. And then fell off the table for 05, 06, part of 07. Then when the Marlins started to charge with Gary Sheffield, Moises Alou, and fucking Kevin Brown and all those guys in 97, won that World Series. Uh, that was a big thing for an expansion team that was four years old to win a World Series. People started to come back, and then next year is fucking McGuire Sosa, right? Right. And it kind of kept going up until fucking people started getting – until the Mitchell Report basically came out. Um, so baseball has fluctuated. All, most of the other sports – aside, hockey's had some ups and downs because they had a strike as well, but most of the other sports have been on a straight upward trajectory of the last 15 or 20 years. And now they're fucking dealing with lean times, and they don't know how to deal with it. So it's going to be interesting to see – what they try to do, like in risk management terms, you would be trying to do something called risk spreading. Like you spread the risk out amongst the bigger uh, area, smoothing, however you want to refer to it. 
you try to find new ways to monetize new revenue streams and shit like that cut fat where you can find it right uh i I just don't know where the nba is going to find it though Honestly, like those concessions, at the, it's only 20, 000, 18 to 20,000 people there, but the tickets are more expensive than any other sport. Oh, dude, you, you go, uh, if you want a Lakers ticket, lower level, right? Yeah, it's like fucking 400 bucks. Uh, it's a hundred and, I think $75. If you want to get a good seat, it's like $400 at Staples Center. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the aftermarket, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I'm just talking about if you're able to get oh, like a box season office ticket tickets, or something. Yeah, 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 box yeah. office tickets. Your your face value is is one seventy five. Mm-hmm. Good luck in the aftermarket. Right, yeah. you're looking at four. And those are average ticket. games. If it's like the Clippers playing there, or fucking yeah, any great team, you're not going to get tickets for under five hundred bucks. So yeah, they're um, not they're not going to be. I mean, that's a lot of money. I think the hold on. Let's see what the average Lakers ticket price is. Average Lakers ticket price for a home game four hundred and seventy three dollars. There you go. So that's what do they hold eighteen five, nineteen five I believe 19, Staples 5? Center. Yeah. That is uh, nine point two million per game. Sure. Just in tickets. Yeah. Not including the concessions, the advertising, all that bullshit. Parking. The parking goddamn Staples Parking, Center, dude. Yeah. You go down to Staples Center, bro. Try to find a, a spot for under 40. They're probably bringing in, if you include the ad revenue and everything, they're probably bringing in fucking $25 million a game because they're making 10 on just people sitting there. Mm-hmm. God damn, ten million a game. That's half a billion a year, give or take. Or a twenty five million a year, that would be one point three billion a year, give or take, just on the game itself, not right. on anything else that's going on advertising wise. They're fucking hurting badly. They they are hurting bad, man. Um and uh we'll just, see just we'll just see in, what, what goes on here. Just um, in ticket sales. Lastly, before we get out of that here, that is three hundred eighty million dollars a year they're losing right now. Holy yeah, shit. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking brutal. Oof, man. everybody's fucking bleeding money right now. So what are they gonna do? Uh, you got to get through this first of all, and then figure out how to take politics out of sports, man. I, I, I genuinely think it's having a huge effect. Me personally, maybe it's, it's, it has an effect on me. The politics aren't going anywhere though. <sighs> Boy, so I hope shit's I, over. Well, people might not be watching that shit anymore. Um, Maybe. I want to talk about, uh, lastly, the first major of the year for uh, golf is upon mm-hmm. us. Um, I want to find these odds on my bookie. There's a guy that I've had my eye on this year that has looked lights out. And I want to see what the odds are. If you could pull up the, the odds for the, uh, yeah, I'm looking for the PGA Championship this year. Um, Betting lines. My bookie's got a beautiful new interface, by the way. Congratulations yeah, to Yeah, I'm a big guys. fan of this. Shit, dude. They really fucking did it. Um, but again, if you're at home and you're bored, everybody's sports gambling these I days. I mean, they have a shitload of fucking PGA stuff for this yeah. for this weekend. Okay, I mean, great. So pull pull it up. Do you <clears throat> do you have the favorites on there? Uh, yeah, Brooks Kepka and Justin Thomas are both plus one thousand. Plus one thousand. So yeah. if you're betting a hundred, you want a thousand. Yeah. Um, John we, John Ram, Rory McIlroy, both at fourteen hundred. Uh, okay. Bryson DeChambeau is at sixteen. And then Dustin Johnson and Xander Shuffle, 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 Shuffle. Um, I'm going. 2000. So Bryson DeChambeau mm-hmm. um, has been on fire this year, and uh, Kopka and those guys have been off weeks. Kopka's fucking caddy got uh, AIDS slash COVID, mm-hmm. um, so he was out for a little bit. Um, this Bryson DeChambeau is it plus sixteen hundred? Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw a hundred on him. That'll pay off at sixteen hundred. That's who I'm going to go with this weekend. Um, in this uh, this the PGA event, it's the first of the year. This guy has been on fucking fire, um, and it, it it feels like to me every because they golf started a while ago in June, mm-hmm. and I watch it. No, no matter what, in my household, there is some form of sports in the background if I'm working or you know doing contracts and shit. Um, the PGA is always on, and uh, especially on Sundays because there's nothing really on. Um, and this Bryson DeChambeau kid. Uh, has looked really goddamn good, and that is where my money is going. Where is this where is this at? Uh, I'm not sure which course it is at. Is it at? Fucking, I know they it's moved at them Pinehurst, right? All around, maybe. Um, they moved them all around. Like the Masters got moved to November this year. Uh, my, it, it's strange seeing this major first because typically it's the mm. Masters in April. So uh, I'm not really sure. I've been seeing some ads for it on TV, and uh, and I'm amped for it. But I'm going to go on mybookie.com mm. tonight and bet on Bryson. To Shambo uh, to win the first major of the year. Is it Warwick Hills? Um, what's Tiger Woods at down there? Uh, hang on, let me look. Tiger Woods. Um, shit. 
He has not looked great this year. He is at 3,300. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, if you want to take a flyer on it, look. Maybe. You never know with him. Throw 100 on that, you win <clears throat> three fucking grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? 3,300 bucks, yeah. Uh, but my money is on Bryson DeChambeau this weekend, and that's where I'm going. I don't know where this is. Where is Warwick Hills Country Club? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's in Michigan? In Saginaw? Michigan? That can't be right. Why would the fuck would they play the tour championship there? I thought, it, it, it moves. They, I, I know they move it, all the time. I thought so. it rotated between a couple of set plays, like Pinehurst number two and a couple other places. I'm not sure. I don't know shit about golf because it's not a real sport. No. Well, golf is what – let me ask you this. What do baseball pitchers do when they're not pitching? Golf. Right. Yeah. What do golfers do when they're not – they don't play fucking professional baseball. Uh, they golf do is not a sport. They yeah. Do, they well, do John Daly. It's in San Francisco? Yeesh, going to be a lot of people shitting in the streets out there. Yeah. I mean, a lot I, of people shitting in the streets this weekend. That was uh, very dangerously Fits close, by the way, to becoming our uh, Super Bowl bet. Which was? Like if San Francisco oh, yeah, yeah, won. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won that one. Yeah. Um, the, the audience was really pissed that I didn't wear a San Francisco 49ers we might do it anyways. shit in front of Nancy Pelosi's Maybe you house. should wear a Bill Clinton mask instead, like, uh, like uh, Point Break. Yeah. Style and then shit on Nancy Pelosi's lawn. <laughs> Let's yeah. hope she's out of there in November. You know, no, she's never leaving until she dies. Come on, man. Which if could they be lose. Another, she's eighty-one years old. So. If they lose, she's out of there. So, oh, you mean we'll as see. a speaker? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I don't want to see her face ever again. No I'm one all does. done on Nancy Pelosi in this life. We're all done with the sports show today. Bet weathers are against us on mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposits. Um, we'll see what happens with all this shit. I don't know. Take the politics out of sports, man. Just bring us back entertainment. I just want to be entertained. Is that too much to ask for? For D'Anthony to D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros Sports Companion Show. Good night, everyone. Nah.